Good morning, Isaiah. Blessings to you. Pray that you had a wonderful night of rest. Thank you for inviting your followers. Blessings to you. Pray that you had a wonderful weekend. A wonderful uh, night of rest. Excuse me. <laughs> Let the weak say I am strong in the Good morning, everyone. Day off the blessings to you. Good morning, Michelle. Blessings to you. Pray that you had a wonderful night of rest. Good morning, Aisha. Blessings to you. Pray that you had a wonderful night of rest. morning blessings when you're ready say ready when you're ready say ready <clears throat> when you're ready say ready <clears throat> <clears throat> Good morning, Yvette. Blessings to you. Pray that you had a wonderful night of rest. I see that, Glory. When you're ready, say ready, Yvette. I 
I see that. Good. Thank you. <clears throat> Good morning, Shireen. Blessings to you and your husband. Pray that you had a wonderful night of rest. When you're ready, say ready. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Blessings. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Good morning, Valerie, Willie, Tempest, Tina, Timber. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Lessons. All right. Hallelujah. Anybody glad about the Lamb of God? Thank you for the Lamb. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Come on, Lord have mercy. Oh, I'm standing right here. Come on, tap that screen. If you're glad about the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. You washed away. Thank you for washing away our sins. Yes. Amen. God bless you. This is the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Good morning, everyone. We pray that you had a wonderful night of rest. Let's go this morning into our lesson. We're still talking about spiritual authority. Write that down, please. Spiritual authority. Walking in spiritual authority. We ended the lesson by talking about we are enforcers of the laws of God on the earth. Even as God rules in heaven, we're supposed to be ruling on earth. We are God's enforcers of his laws on this earth. Good. Walking in spiritual dark. Good. Excellent. 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 All right. Let's go to uh, our scripture. St. Mark <clears throat> chapter 11. St. Mark chapter 11. We was talking about how Jesus cursed the fig tree. And then the next morning, as they were walking, Peter realized what took place. And he was so amazed by what Jesus did. And notice what Jesus says to him and to the other disciples. Okay? Let's go. St. Mark 11. <clears throat> Verse 20, St. Mark 11 and 20, 
And in the morning as they passed by, they saw the fig tree dried up from the roots. Thank you, Glory. And Peter calling to remembrance, thank you, Valerie, said unto him, Master, behold, the fig tree which thou cursed is withered away. Jesus answered and said unto them, have faith in God. Okay. In other words, the authority that I walk in, it comes from me having faith in God. The authority that I walk in, it comes from me being submitted to my Father. Okay. So if you are going to walk in spiritual authority, number one, You've got to have a relationship with God. And number two, you've got to be submitted to God. Okay. Good morning, Dina. The Lord bless and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you shalom. Peace. St. Mark chapter 11, verse 20. We're talking about walking in spiritual authority. Okay. Jesus says to them, have faith in God. Okay. Remember I told you Peter was so amazed. He said, you spoke to that tree yesterday. You cursed that tree yesterday. You said that no fruit would grow on that tree. Thank you, Valerie. And now the next morning, 24 hours. The tree is withered. The tree dried up at the roots. So Peter is trying to figure out how could something that big happen so quickly? How could something that great happen within 24 hours? And Jesus' response to that was, have faith in God. Okay. Watch this. Verse 23. Okay, have faith in God. That's the key. Your faith is only as strong as the object it is in. Write that down, please. Your faith is only as strong as the object that it's in. Okay, most people have faith in faith, but they don't have faith in God. That's the key. Come on, you must put your faith in in God. It is the object that determines how strong your faith is. It's not faith itself. It is the object that you put your faith in that determines how strong your faith is. All right, watch this. So he says, have faith. Good morning, Shamia. Good morning, Lenore. Good morning, Rosa. Good morning, Ruth. Blessings to you. The Lord bless and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. Good morning, CJ. Blessings to you. See, doctor. Blessings. First time on the scope. Thank you for joining us. Love you. All right. We're in St. Mark chapter 11. St. Mark chapter 11. St. Mark chapter 11. Verse 20. Now we're on verse uh, 21. And then we just read 22 when Jesus said, have faith in God. Now watch verse 23. For verily I say unto you that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass, he will have whatsoever he Say it, okay? Write that word down, mountain, okay? Because they were at the Mount of Olives. The Mount of Olives was full of fig trees. The Mount of Olives was full of fig trees. Jesus said, if you think what I did was something with this fig tree, watch this, Valerie. Watch this, Shamir. Watch this, Lenore. Jesus said, if you think what I did, Yvette, with this fig tree is something, if you have faith in God, you can speak to this mountain, which is full of fig trees. 
and you can tell the mountain where to go. And it has to obey you. Lord have mercy. Spiritual authority, when you are connected to God, and when you speak according to the word of God, things must obey you. We are so used to uh, we are so used to our circumstances dictating our lives that we don't understand your mountain is not supposed to be moving you. You're supposed to be moving your mountain. Your circumstances are not supposed to be moving you. You're supposed to be moving your circumstances. A mountain is symbolic of that which stands between you and what God promised you. Anything that stands in your way. God says if that you have the power to move it. All you have to do, number one, have faith in God. Come on. Number two, be submitted to God. Number three, believe that what you say, it comes to pass. Hallelujah. You must believe that what you say, it comes to pass. Come on. You've got to believe that. You've got to believe that when you speak the word, God will honor your word. Why? Because you are submitted to his authority. When you are submitted to his authority, yes, Lord, then you can walk in authority. Let me say that again. When you are submitted to his authority, you can walk in authority. Somebody write that down. When you are submitted to God's authority, then you can truly walk in in authority, because the only authority there is, is God's authority, okay? But if you submit yourself to his authority, that is when you are walking in authority, okay? Those of you who are married, those of you who are husbands, when you submit your life to God's authority, that's when you're really walking in authority. We love for people to listen to us. We love for people to follow us. But what good is it for your spouse, your children, or anyone else to follow your authority when you're not submitted to God's authority? Okay? So when we are submitted to God's authority, then we're really walking in authority. But until you are submitted to God's authority, you really are not in authority, okay? Well, let me put it a different way. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Good. Come on, tap that screen if you're receiving, because that's powerful. That's powerful. Come on, tap that screen. Come on. You've got to submit to authority. It is illegal. It is illegal for you to try to be in authority without submitting to authority. It is illegal for you to try to be in authority without submitting to authority. You remember the Roman centurion? The Roman centurion. Good morning, Cheryl. Blessings to you. The Lord bless and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you shalom. There you go. Excellent. 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 Good. Good. Good morning. Pray that you had a wonderful night of rest. Good. We're talking about spiritual authority this morning. Spiritual authority this morning. Spiritual authority comes from you being submitted to God's authority. Spiritual authority comes from you being submitted to God's authority. Write that down. Spiritual authority. One can only walk in spiritual authority when they are submitted to God's authority. That's what gives you authority because you are submitted to God's authority. Okay. 
So when you submit your lives to God's authority, that's when you're truly walking in spiritual authority. Until you do that, then you're just wasting time. Because God is the ultimate authority. God is the ultimate authority. Good. There you go. Yeah, you've got to be submitted to God's authority. Go with me to Matthew chapter 8, please. Go with me to Matthew chapter 8. Let me show you something. Matthew chapter 8. Matthew chapter 8, verses 5 to about 13. Write that down. Matthew 8, 5 to 13. Let me show you something. Matthew 8, we're talking about authority. Matthew 8. Matthew chapter 8. Okay. Start at verse 5. Okay. And when Jesus was entered into Capernaum, there came unto him a centurion beseeching him and saying, Lord, my servant lieth at home, sick of the palsy, grievously tormented. Jesus said unto him, I will come and heal him. The centurion asked and said, Lord, I am not worthy that thou should come under my roof, but speak the word only and my servant shall be healed. Watch this. For I am a man under authority. Write that word down. Did you catch that, Glory? He said, I am a man under authority. Lord, have mercy. Having soldiers under me. And I say to this man, go, and he goeth. And to another, come, and he cometh. And to my servant, do this, and he does it. When Jesus heard it, he marveled and said to them, that followed. Verily I say unto you, I have not found so great faith, no, not in Israel. Did you see that, Cheryl? Did you see that, Yvette? Did you see that, the author? Did you see that, Lenore? Notice the text. We're talking about walking in spiritual authority. Now watch this. Verse number five, Jesus enters Capernaum, okay? He runs into a centurion. Come on. Write that down. A Roman centurion. Write that down. He runs into a centurion. A man of authority. Okay. A centurion, write this down. He is responsible for a command. Let's just say of a hundred men. Okay. He is responsible So the centurion was a commander. That was the smallest unit of a Roman legion. Okay. A legion was normally compassed of about 6,000 soldiers. And each legion was divided into 10 cohorts. And then each cohort contains six centuries. Okay. So this man was in charge of one, a small group, but still a hundred men. That's still a lot. That's still a lot. But he understood authority because he was over these men. 
Now notice what he says, Valerie. He says, I am a man under authority. That's what I want you to see. Okay. Jesus came in to the centurion, beseeching him and saying, Lord, watch this. The centurion said, Lord, my servant lieth at home, sick of the palsy, grievously tormented. Okay, write this down. Let, let's, let's pull out some principles. Number one, this man goes to Jesus on behalf of someone else. Write that down. Did you catch that, Lenore? This man went to Jesus, glory, on behalf of somebody else. Isaiah, he did not come asking for himself. He came on behalf of his servant. When you go to God, are you always going to God for something you need? When was the last time you went to God on behalf of somebody else? Good, thank you. Come on, Yvette. When was the last time you went to God on behalf of somebody else? Mona Lisa, Aisha, Shireen. Kiana, Kadia, Michael, Valerie, CJ, when was the last time you went to God on behalf of someone else? Or are you always going to God, asking him about you? What about me? What about me? Are you going to God on behalf of your family? When was the last time you went to God on behalf of somebody else not related to you. Okay, good. Excellent. Notice what he said, Shireen. He said, my servant is at home, sick of the palsy, grievously tormented. Jesus said unto him, I will come and heal him. Okay. That is very important. Jesus said, I will come and heal him. Write that down. Notice what Jesus said. I will come and heal him. Watch this, Valerie. Did you catch that, Isaiah? He said, I will come and heal him. Why is that important? Usually... The person is asking Jesus to come. In this scenario, Jesus said, I will come and heal him. Good, Dina. Then the centurion answered Dina and said, Lord, I am not worthy. I want you to see something because many times, Yvette, we have a hard time receiving from God because we don't think we are worthy. Somebody write this down. His blood makes me worthy. Come on. Declare that this morning. His blood makes me worthy. Isaiah the blood of Jesus makes you worthy. Glory, the blood of Jesus makes you worthy. Michelle, the blood of Jesus makes you worthy. Tina, the blood of Jesus makes you worthy. Lenore, Shamia, the blood makes you worthy. Hallelujah. Good, Cheryl. The blood makes you worthy. And many times we have a hard time receiving from God because we don't think we're worthy. If you had to be worthy in order for God to bless you, you would be in trouble. His blood makes you worthy, Shamia. His blood makes you worthy, Shireen. His blood makes you worthy, Yvette. His blood makes you worthy, Diamond. His blood makes you worthy. Yes, thank you. His blood 
makes you worthy. Shekinah, Lisa, Lois, June, his blood makes us worthy, glory. Teresa, his blood makes us worthy. The author, Lydell, his blood makes us worthy. He said, I am not worthy that you should come under my roof. Watch this. I am not a saved man. I am not part of your covenant. Matter of fact, I am a Roman. And you know that the Romans and the Jews uh, have this thing. Okay. And I'm not even worthy that you should come under my roof. Now notice, Jesus was the one who said he would come and heal him. Jesus already knew his condition. Write that down, please. Write that down. Jesus knows your condition. Come on. Jesus knows your condition. It wasn't a shock. This man said, I'm not worthy. Well, apparently, Jesus thought he was worthy. Aren't you glad that when others say you're not worthy, God deems you worthy? Aren't you glad when others overlook you, God looks you over? I need someone to celebrate with me this morning that God knows your condition and he still loves you. God knows everything about you and he still loves you. He doesn't love you because of, he loves you in spite of. Does anybody have an in spite of praise that I'm praising him in spite of? Hallelujah. I'm praising him in spite of. I'm praising him in spite of. Good. In spite of. He doesn't love you because of. He loves you in spite of what you have done. In spite of where you have been. In spite of what you think about yourself. Dina, he loves you in spite of. People will hate you with speculation but God loves you with all the facts. My God, he knows everything about you, Yvette, and he loves you. He knows everything about you, Shamia, and he loves you. You are. He is mindful of you, Cheryl. His mind is full of you, Cheryl. He loves you unconditionally. Jesus already knew this man's condition. That's why no one should have to tell you to praise the Lord. Because when you think about you, you know you. See, this man knew himself just like you know yourself. And in knowing yourself, you should be ever grateful that God loves you. Because people don't know you. But God knows everything about you, Val, and he still loves you. He, that's why the psalmist said, what is man that thou art mindful of him? He is mindful of you, the author. He is mindful of you, Isaiah. He is mindful of you, Aisha. He is mindful of you, Shireen. He is mindful of you, Dina. He is mindful of you. Hallelujah. Watch this. The censorian said, Lord, I am not worthy that thou should come under my roof, but speak the word only, and my servant shall be healed. Write this down, next point. You don't need as much as you think. Write that down. You don't need as much as you think. You don't need what you think. Some of you think you need a whole lot more than what you need. And the thing that you think you need, you don't need that. You don't need as much as you think. And you really don't need what you think you need. What do you mean, Pastor Brian? This man, Lord have mercy. My God, watch this glory. Come on, somebody say, Pastor Brian, break it down. Watch this. Holy Spirit, 
Open the eyes of our understanding this morning. Holy Spirit, teach us. You are the greatest teacher. You are the greatest teacher. Notice what this man tapped into. Jesus said, I will come to your house. Good, Shamia. Good, Lenore. Notice, Shamia, this man, Jesus said, I will come to your house. This man said, you don't have to come to my house. All you got to do is speak the word. Lord have mercy. Because if you speak the word, the word will go to my house. Did you catch that, Glory? He said, if you speak the word, the word will go to my house. You don't have to go to my house. Speak the word, and the word will go to my house. Lord, have mercy. Speak the word, and the word will go to my house. And guess what? If the word goes to my house, it's just like you going to my house because you and the word are one. Lord, have mercy. Speak the word, and the word will go to my house. And if the word goes to my house, then you went to my house. Can I tell you something? Write this down. The word knows your address. The word knows your address. The word knows where you live. You think Amazon drops off packages. You think FedEx drops off packages. You think these people drop off. Pat the word knows your address. And I decree and declare that before this month is out, that there will be a package that is dropped off at your house. I decree and declare that before this month is over, you will see that the word is going to show up at your address. GPS, there you go. The word is going to show up at your address. Something big is going to show up at your address. A breakthrough is coming to your address. A healing is coming to your address. A financial blessing is coming to your address. Receive it. That's right. Good morning, Kadia. Blessings to you. Father, we thank you for Kadia this morning. Touch her body. We speak healing, wholeness, and health in Jesus' name. Did you catch that? The word, this man tapped into something. I love it. I love it. All right, Shamia, good. I love it. He knows your address. He knows your address. The man said, you don't have to come to my house. In other words, I don't need what everybody else needs. Other people think you need to come to their house. Jairus said, Lord, if you come to my house and lay your hands on my daughter, she will be made whole. He said, I don't need what Jairus needs. I believe that if you speak the word, the word will go to my house and heal my servant. Let's see what Jesus replied. Do me a favor. Tap that screen if you receive him. Come on. Tap that screen if you receive him. Come on. He said, speak the word only. Lord have mercy. That's another point. That's another point. That's another point. Speak the word only. Good. There you go. Stop talking your circumstances. Speak the word only. Stop talking about what it looks like. Speak the word only. Stop talking about how you feel. Speak the word 
only. Come on. What would happen if you and I followed this principle? What would happen if you only spoke the word? When it came to what God said you can do, you only spoke the word. When it came to who God says you are, if you only spoke the word, it, when it came to what God says you can have, if you only spoke the word, what, how different would your life be if you only spoke the word? Think about it, the author. Think about it, Yvette. Think about it, Shamir. Think about it, Lenore. How different would your life be, Cheryl, if you only spoke the word? How different would your life be, Regina, Diamond, Aisha, Isaiah? How different would your life be, Shireen, if we only spoke the word? Speak the word only. When you go to God, you should be speaking the word only. When you go to prayer, you should be speaking the word only. Stop telling God about your problem. You spend most of your prayer time telling God about your problem. You're, you're describing what you're going through. And God says, when you come to me, Valerie, put me in remembrance of my word. When you come to me, Lenore, put me in remembrance of my word. When you come to me, Wendy, when you come to me, James, put me in remembrance of my word. Good. He, I already know what you're going through. I already know what you have need of. Just remind me of what I said. I want you to start your prayer by saying, Lord, you said. Lord, you said concerning my children. My children are the seed of the righteous. Great shall be their peace, and they shall be mighty in the land. When it comes to your finances, Lord, you said I have more than enough. Lord, you said you would supply my need according to your riches and glory. When it comes to your health, Lord, you said with your stripes, I am healed. God says, remind me of what I said only. Speak my word. Speak the word only. Hallelujah. There you go. Lord, you said, let the weak say I'm strong. Lord, you said, let the poor say I'm rich. So I'm saying I'm rich. I'm saying I'm strong. I'm saying I'm the head. You said, made me the head and not the tail. Lord, you said, Lord, have mercy. Oh, Lord, have mercy. So this man said, speak the word only, and my servant shall be healed. Look at the confidence. Write, write, write this word down, please. Write that word down. Notice what he says, Shamir. He says, when you speak the word, my servant shall be. Good God Almighty. My servant shall be healed. Good. I like that, Valerie. Good. I like that, Shamir. Good, Lenore. Come on. Hallelujah. There you go. Lord, you said in Isaiah 58 and 8, my health shall spring forth speedily. Come on. You said in Exodus 23 and 25, you would remove sickness and disease from the midst of me. I thank you that I am covered. Lord, you said that I have divine protection, divine provision, and I thank you in Jesus' name. Look at the confidence, glory. He said, my servant shall be healed. Look at the confidence, Dina. My servant shall be healed. Look at the confidence, Shireen. Look at the confidence, Cheryl. My servant shall be healed. I love it. Good, Cheryl. You said, come on, remind him of what he said. Good. Shall be. Good, Valerie. Good, Tina. Shall be. Good, Wendy. Good, Diamond. 
good Aisha, shall be. Come on, Isaiah. He said, shall be. My God. My God. Shall be. Good. Why is that important? Because he understood when the word is spoken, everything must line up to the word. Write that down. When the word is spoken, everything must line up with the word. When the word is spoken, Shamia, everything in your life has to line up with the word. He understood that when the word goes forth, everything must submit to the word. So if, if you speak the word, my servant shall be healed. If you speak the word, my servant shall be healed. Why? Because when you speak the word, everything has to line up. It has no choice. It has no choice, Valerie. Your body has to line up, Lenore. It has no choice. The wind has to stop blowing. When Jesus said, peace be still, the wind had to be still. Why? It has no choice. Because when the word is spoken, everything must submit to the word. When Jesus said, Lazarus, come forth, the grave could not hold him. When Jesus said, Lazarus, come forth, nothing could hold him. Why? Because when the word is spoken, everything must line up. Good morning, Candace. The Lord bless and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Blessings to you. We're in Matthew chapter 8. There you go. You speak that word. When you speak that word over your children, over your grandson, they will not only serve God, know God, but they will serve him. They will not only be saved, but they will serve God all the days of their life. My God, come on. That's the word. Lord, you said, my seed shall be like the seed. Lebanon shall be like the oak tree. Come on, Yvette's new home is coming. Come on. Yes, Lord, come on. See, when you speak the word, Lord, you said you would give me houses I did not build. My God, hallelujah. Lord, you said wherever I placed the sole of my feet, you would give it to me. I thank you that there are properties coming to me. I don't even have to pay for. I thank you for unexpected checks. I thank you in the name of Jesus. It is so and so it is. I thank you for hidden riches in secret places. Did you hear that? Hidden riches in secret places. Hidden riches in secret places. They are not hidden from you. They are hidden for you. Hear me by the Spirit. God is about to uncover some things that were hidden for you. God is about to uncover some things that were hidden for you. Sam Seed, his business is going to be out of control. Overflow. To God be the glory. We believe and receive it. Now, come on. God is going to uncover some things that have been hidden on your behalf. Somebody receive that. God is going to uncover some things Isaiah, D. Arthur, Michelle, Shireen. God is going to uncover some things, Cheryl, that was hidden on your behalf. Not hidden from you, but hidden for you. Hidden riches in secret places. Hidden riches, Yvette, in secret places. Hidden riches, Samia, in secret places. So watch this. The man said, all you got to do is speak the word, and my servant shall be healed. Verse 9, for I am a man under authority. Good, Shireen, I agree with you. Yes, it shall be. Watch this. 
Verse 9, watch this, Lenore. The Roman centurion Cheryl says, I am a man under authority, having soldiers under me. I say to this man, go, and he goeth to another come, and he comes, and to my servant do this, and he does it. He says, I understand how authority works. Write that down. This Roman centurion, Dina, said, I understand how authority works. If I'm over a hundred men and you are the Messiah and you are over the world, if I can tell one to go and they go, if I can tell one to come and they come, if I can tell one to do this and they do it, how much more, see, my authority is over them but your authority is over the whole world. Good, good, Valerie. He says, I understand how authority works because I'm a man under authority. You will never understand authority until you get under authority. Write that down. Boy, that's powerful. Where's my bomb squad? You will never understand authority authority until you get under authority. He says, the reason I know how authority works because I'm under it. Lord have mercy. The reason why, thank you, Glory. Thank you, Valerie. He says, the reason why I know how authority works because I am under authority. I want you to catch this Shireen, Shamia, Isaiah, Aisha, Wendy, James, Valerie, Shakina, Diamond. There you go. He says, I'm under authority. See? Who caught it? Who caught it? Who caught what the man said? He said, I'm a man under authority. Who caught it? Good. Good, Shireen. Who caught it? Who caught it? Who caught it? This man is a Roman centurion. He's over a hundred men. He's over a hundred men. He's over a hundred men. And he says, I am a man under authority. See? Under authority. In authority. Did you catch it? Write that, write down those two words. Lord have mercy. Write down those two words. Did you see that, Cheryl? Under in. Under, in, under, in. Did you see that? Under, in. Thank you, Valerie. Under, in. I'm under authority and I'm in authority. What gives me authority is that I'm under authority. Come on. You can't be in if you're not under. Lord have mercy. You cannot be in if you're not under if you are trying to be in without being under, you have unauthorized authority. He says, I'm under and I'm in. The only reason I'm over these 100 men, soldiers, because I'm under Caesar. I'm under Caesar which gives me authority over these men. Good morning, Sam. The Lord bless and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. You got another prophetic word this morning, Sam. You'll have to watch. You got another word. Did you catch that, Shamir? Lenore, I'm under authority. I'm under Caesar. Come on. Do you see that? This Roman 
centurion was under Caesar. Write that down. He's under Caesar. And Caesar gave him authority over these soldiers. Write that down. He's under Caesar. He's a Roman centurion. Okay? Caesar is the one in charge. He has appointed this man to be over these soldiers. I want you to see how authority works. Do you understand that? Come on, tap that screen. This is powerful. Once you understand this, you will be powerful in the kingdom of God. Yes, he's under Caesar. Good. And Caesar has delegated his authority. See? Come on. He's under Caesar. And Caesar has delegated his authority. So he is saying, Rome has delegated me to be an authority. Okay. I want you to catch this. Because Jesus marveled at this man saying. He said, speak the word only. And my sir, Jesus marveled. All right, write this down. There's only two people. Two people in the whole Bible that Jesus said they had great faith. Two people. Two people in the Bible had great faith. Neither one was saved. Neither one of these people was saved, but Jesus said they had great faith. There are two people Jesus commended for their great faith. One was the Syrophoenician woman. And the other was the Roman centurion. Write that down. Two people in the Bible, Cheryl, that Jesus commended for their faith. The Syrophoenician woman and the Roman centurion. Neither one of these two was in the covenant. Neither one of these two was Jewish. But yet, Jesus said they have tapped into something. And I have not seen great faith like this in all of Israel. That's powerful. Okay. Write this down, please. Let's, let me give you a couple of things that this man was saying. Are you ready? When you're ready, say ready. Tap that screen. Come on. Come on. Hallelujah. Good. Watch this. Watch this. This is what this man was saying. When I say something, when I say something, I'm back by Rome. Write that down. This is what he was saying, Valerie. When I say something, I'm back by Rome. When I say something, I'm back by Rome. Watch this, Lenore. Catch this glory. Catch this Isaiah. Catch this people of God. This is how you and I are going to begin to walk in spiritual authority. When I say something, I'm back by Rome. Okay. Number two. This is what he's saying. When I speak, the soldiers don't hear me, they hear Rome. Watch this. He said, when I say something, I'm back by Rome. Number two, he said, when I speak to the soldiers, they do not hear me, they hear Rome. Good God Almighty. They do not hear me, they hear Caesar. When I say something, 
I'm backed by Rome. When I speak to these soldiers, they do not hear me. They hear Caesar. Rome delegated me authority. Rome delegated me authority. Lord have mercy. In other words, number three, number three, this is what he was saying. Caesar has delegated me to speak on his behalf. Write that down. These are three powerful principles. This is what this man was saying, Cheryl. Caesar has delegated me to speak on his behalf. Lenore, Caesar has delegated me to speak on his behalf. Lord, have mercy. My God, this, I hope you're catching it. Do, do you got it? Did you, did you catch it, Isaiah? Let me ask you a question as we go, Kadia. Who was Rome? What was Rome to this Roman centurion? What was Rome to this man? What did Rome represent to this man? Somebody tell me. What did Rome represent to this man? Who was Rome to this man? Somebody tell me, D. Arthur, Kadia, Isaiah, Sam. What did Rome represent to this man? Who was Rome? Who was Rome? When, I, when you hear the word Rome, he says, when I say something, I'm backed by Rome. Who is Rome? Who is Rome? When I speak, they do not hear me. The law. Okay. Come on. It's easy. It begins with a G. It begins with a G. Who is Rome? The law. Begins with a G. Who is Rome? The government. Good. The government. Come on. He says, when I say something, I have the backing of my government. I have the backing of my government. Why? Because the government has delegated me this authority. I hope you're catching this. Now, let's apply it to our life. Are you ready? Are you ready? Let's apply it to our lives. Can we do it? Let's go. Because we have submitted ourselves under the kingdom. Because we have submitted ourselves under God. Come on. Whenever we say something, the government backs us. Come on. When we say something, come on. God backs our word. Come on. God has delegated us authority to speak on his behalf. Come on. He's... My God, he has given us the okay to speak on his behalf. Because we are under authority, we can be in authority. The government backs us. So when I speak to the mountain, the mountain does not move because of me. The mountain moves because of him. It's not about me. It's about the government I'm submitted to. It's not about me. It's about the one I'm under their authority. And I'm under God's authority. So when I speak, it's as if God is speaking. Because I'm speaking his word. Lord have mercy. Here's another point. Here's another point. Write this down. Come on, tap that screen. I should see bombs. I hope you caught that. I hope you caught that. Yeah, you. I don't want you to see it just with the centurion. I want you to see it with you. 
Hallelujah. Here's another point the man was saying. He said, when I speak to the soldiers, watch this, Val. He's saying, when I speak to the soldiers, they have to obey me, Yvette. The soldiers have to obey me, Yvette, because of the position I was placed in. Lenore, this Roman centurion is saying, the soldiers have to obey me because of the position I was placed in. Glory, the soldiers have to obey him because of the position he was placed in. Everything on this earth has to obey you, Shireen, because of the position you were placed in. Everything on this earth has to obey you, Lenore, because of the position you were placed in. Everything on this earth has to obey you, Glory, has to obey you, Shamia, has to obey you, the author, because of the position you were placed in. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. So why are you letting your circumstances push you around? Why are you letting life push you around? Why are you allowing things to have the last say? You are not at the mercy of your circumstances. You have spiritual authority. And as you release the word, things have to come in order. You don't have to put up with anything out of order. Write that down. You don't have to put up with anything out of order, Valerie. Whatever's out of order in your life, Sam, you don't have to put up with it. You can speak the word and it has to come in line. Did you hear that, Shamir? You don't have to put up with things that's out of order, Yvette. You have the authority in your mouth to speak the word. Anything that's out of order, Kadir, you have been assigned. You have been delegated authority to speak to it. All right. My God. All right. My God. All right. Tap that screen. We got to close. I'm already past my time. I'm already past my time. I hope you grabbed hold of what God was saying. We have spiritual authority. We do not have to put up with anything. Come on. Good. Yes. Yes. Good, Cheryl. Come on. You have the backing of your government. You have the backing of your government. And when you say, Lord, you said, God backs it up. Why? Because that's what he said. He honors his word. The soldiers have to obey him because he's only in authority because of Caesar. Caesar put him there. So the government backs up what he says. The government allows him to speak on their behalf. The government, which is the kingdom of God, allows you and I to speak on behalf of the government. That is what an ambassador does. An ambassador speaks on behalf of the government. Shireen, you are an ambassador. Lenore, you are an ambassador. Cheryl, you are an ambassador. Valerie, Kadia, Wendy, James, Diamond, the author, Dina, Sam, we are ambassadors for Christ. We speak on behalf of the government. We don't have an opinion. It's not your opinion. An ambassador never gives their opinion. An ambassador only speaks on behalf of the government. And the government that we are under is the kingdom of God. We are enforcers of the laws of the kingdom. We are supposed to bring the culture of heaven to earth. We are supposed to bring the culture of heaven to earth. 
the values of heaven to earth. The morals of heaven to earth. The world's culture has taken over. And it's time for us who are the law enforcers to enforce the laws of the kingdom on this earth. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. God wants his will to be established on the earth and he's going to do it through us. Thank you, Lord, that you give us the opportunity to establish your kingdom on this earth. All right, tap that screen if you were blessed this morning. Man, that was powerful. Man, that was powerful. Man, that was powerful this morning. That was powerful this morning. That was powerful this morning. The Lord is so powerful. Come on, tap that screen. Come on, tap that screen. Come on, tap that screen this morning. Tap that screen this morning. Tap that screen if you receive. Remember, do something today to increase your value. Number two, keep seed in the ground. Number three, keep a joyful attitude. Number four, there it goes. On earth as it is in heaven. Good. Number four, walk in righteousness. Number five, awake to righteousness. Number six, expect divine intervention. Number seven, be fruitful. Number eight, multiply. Number nine, replenish. Number 10, subdue. Number 11, stay connected. Number 12, walk in your spiritual authority. Number 14, know that you are a citizen of the kingdom. Number 15, know that you have the backing of the government. Come on, do me a favor. Lord, have mercy. Write this down. Declare it this morning. I am backed by my government. Come on. I am backed by my government. This man understood that when I tell these soldiers to do this, to do that, they do it because they don't hear me. They hear Caesar. Not only Caesar, but they hear Rome. The government backs what I say. Hallelujah. My God, to you be glory. Well, once again, we thank you for your time. We are out of time for today. We want you to have a productive day. We want you to have a fruitful day. Know that God has commanded this day to back. We, we're not made for defeat. We are under God. There you go. There you go. God backs your word. He backs your word. You know why? Because you are speaking his word. Let me say that again. God will back your word when you speak his word. Yes, you too. Go to our YouTube channel, please. Go to our YouTube channel, please. And subscribe. Help us get a thousand subscribers. Tell your friends and family about our YouTube channel. Go there, subscribe, like, and comment. Go to the website. Get your t-shirts. Thank you, Lenore. Get your t-shirts. I love kingdom, I love God, and I, God made, get the t-shirts, okay? Remember what I just said, God will back your word when you speak his word. Remember that. Hear me. God will back your word when you speak his word. I am not speaking what I said. I'm speaking what God said, and when you speak his word, God will get behind your word. Hallelujah. Because it's his word. My God. Whatever you bind on earth, God will bind it in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth, God will loose it in heaven. It's not that you're binding. You're binding what he's already has bound. You're loosing what he has already loosed. We're speaking his word. Good. God will back your word when you speak his word. Good. Good. He honors his word. Faith honors God and God honors faith. Come on. All right, I got to go. God bless you once again. Before we close, we always give you an opportunity to sow. Go to our website. Go to the Cash App. Uh, you can sow. Also, if you want to, you can go to our 
Use our mailing address. Let us know how this broadcast is being a blessing to you. Write us a letter. If you have any testimonies, be sure to send us a testimony. You may say, oh, there's not enough room on here to type. Good. You can come on or you can send us a letter in the mail. Just letting us know what God is doing in your life. All right. We love you all. Have an awesome day. We value you. We honor you. Continue to seek. The kingdom. Make the kingdom your priority. Make the kingdom your priority. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. That is the secret. That is the secret. Put in the kingdom first. Making the kingdom your priority. That is the secret. If you want to live life more abundantly, you've got to seek first the kingdom. You've got to do things God's way. Doing things your way will not work. You've got to do things God's way. Come on. Amen. God bless you. Thank you so much for the teaching. Bless you, Pastor, your family. Amen. I receive it. All right. Have a wonderful day. God bless each one of you. Shalom. Shalom to you, Renea. Shalom to you, Diamond. Shalom to you, Cheryl, Shamia, Lenore, the author. Michelle, Shalom, Glory, Shalom, Valerie, Shalom, Willie, Tempest, Tina, Timber, Shalom. Nothing missing, nothing broken. Kadia, nothing missing, nothing broken. Isaiah, nothing missing, nothing broken. Wendy, James, nothing missing, nothing broken. June, nothing missing, nothing broken. Hallelujah. Blessings to each one of you. Lisa, Shakina, Walter. Nothing missing, nothing broken, nothing lacking. Kiana, Sam, you've got to know that the favor of God is on you. The favor of God is in you. The favor of God surrounds you as a shield. Have a great day, Renee. Bye.